So uh, about a year ago, actually it was a little bit over a year ago, um, we had some activity on an ambassador ticket, so or an ambassador related ticket, right? So there's kind of been this um, question of how's the ambassador program doing, right? So over the years, uh, the ambassador program has had many successes and trials. And I would say over the last three to four years, there was some kind of disjointedness in a variety of ways that created um, like a decline in activity, a decline in cohesion, understanding of how to go about doing outreach as ambassadors. Yes, absolutely. Justin, take your time. Coffee is essential. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yes. make sure you got that. <laughs> awesome, Justin, I can't wait. Um, right. So we had some disjointed, we weren't sure about processes, there's a lot of different things going on. So it's like, what's going on with ambassadors? We don't know. And, and even things like financial responsibilities were moved from ambassadors to mindshare. So it was like, people weren't even sure what they were empowered to do anymore. So I think we had to just take more, like a lot of those things were out of our control. And then I think some things like naturally evolved without like stewardship to to ensure yeah. that sustainability, right? So maybe we didn't like the program grew, but didn't, um, we had more people, but it didn't grow like the, the processes and how we needed to do things, right? So that's kind of how we got in the situation that we're in. We also had like a restriction on how we were doing the budget. Uh, you know, previously we had cardholders across the world for our contributors that we trusted very much to do that, but then how things in Red Hat operate changed, right? So we had to actually move that function to a central kind of person, right? So some things were out of our chain, but it also just threw things off balance. So about a year ago, uh, there was some activity on this ticket and I said, you know what, I'm gonna take a stab at this. Um, I had read a book, um, Change or Switch, How to Change When Change is Hard. And I had looked at how to improve the ambassador program kind of was like an example. So I did it in a book club. And at the end, we we're like, you know, let's put this, uh, what's the right word, the system of change and let's like put something through it as an example, like see what we can figure out by doing that. So I said, hey, can we use the ambassadors program with Fedora? And they were like, yes, yes. So we kind of, I had these analysis from a couple people and I just sat down and I wrote it. So I wrote like, I know, it was like a 15 page proposal, got it out and uh, we worked with the Mindshare Committee, the ambassadors who were interested in participating, uh, the council, we had discussions on that proposal and we made changes to it based on that. And after we, we kind of finalized it and Mindshare approved it, Mariana, Sumantro and myself um, we decided we like uh, started to um, to kind of execute on the plan. So it's been a lot of work, There's a lot of different pieces, and we wanted to make sure that the community felt heard in how we we redo the program. Right. So we did a survey. We had rounds of feedback with people. Um, we bring other folks in when we're wondering, like, you know, how does this work? So we're, we're conversing with stakeholders often um, to make sure that this has been evolving properly. We've um, shared the word at events um, about the work that we're doing. And um, we've also had plenty of volunteers helping us. Um, we're kind of envisioning a whole big team, but it's, it's very, uh, it's thought heavy work, right? So we have to do like some some strategic thinking and um, like how is this actually going to work? How can we evolve this? How can we modernize things? Um, so it was kind of tough to bring like a large group of people into thinking about all those things at the level that they might need to, right? So instead we've kind of reached out to folks um, as needed, like, hey, at the beginning, you said you were willing to work on docs like Justin, um, but you know, we knew that docs weren't gonna happen like right away, but here we are a year later and Justin is with us. So uh, that's just one example of, you know, we were um, including the community as much and as often as we can, though the team effort has been like me, Sumatra and Mariano, like 
week by week, um, making sure that things are still progressing. And for the folks who are in the chat, if you're comfortable, you're welcome to come up uh, on the camera with us. There can be a lot of conversation to be had. We can do it through chat too, but um, you're welcome to join us. So uh, for those who have joined us in just the last few minutes, I've pinned a link to a wiki page and that's where we're gonna start today. So I'm gonna share mine just so that everyone can see it and it's on the presentation as well. So we've made this outline to kind of make sense of what we're doing today. And there's a couple different tasks that we have in mind. And basically we're gonna say like, who is here and what are y'all interested in working on and try to fit uh, with some of those tasks. So I'm gonna describe the different things that we're looking to do today. And then I'd like folks to kind of jump in in the chat um, with maybe where they feel like they would be a good fit for them. So, so what is the community outreach knowledge base? So we want to make a new, not a new actually, an updated ComOps docs page. So Mariana, could you grab the link for that and get it into our chat here? So this knowledge base- The HackMD? Nope, I'm looking for the ComOps doc page. Oh, yeah, sure. So, right, that is going to land. So community operations is going to be the overarching umbrella organization over all these other community outreach teams, right? Like community operations is our internal thing, improving how we work together. That's the idea behind it, right? So we have this above the community, uh, community outreach teams. Um, it's very loosely structured that way, but we want to make a centralized place for people to find things. This is where, um, so Justin asked a question. I'm not sure if we, I'm gonna wait a minute to get to that question, Justin. Um, so right, what is this wiki page? This is so that we can keep track of who's doing what and make sure that we're not um, duplicating efforts, et cetera. So what are, we, what are we doing today? There's gonna be four main tasks and I have a, like, they kind of are range in commitment and uh, brain skill, like brain level energies. So here we go. So we have writing and updating documentation. Uh, Justin asked, how much do we have done? So we have some of the roles done. Uh, we're working on the roles mainly, I think is where we started. Some things can kind of just come over as is or need to be moved into a document so that we can rewrite it, right? Um, the next thing is reviewing drafts of the new documentation. Now, I do think that review for grammar and all that, and even like, does this make sense? Anyone could participate in that. I do think that um, Mariana, Sumantra, or myself should be like the review, the last review kind of thing. I think we should take a look at it before it gets pushed. Um, then we need someone to actually take that and push it to the new docs page. So we actually have um, to keep one thing in mind for that part, which is, now I'm going to potentially get this wrong. HackMD, which we're working in, is in Markdown. Docs is in ASCII. I think I did that right. I was the other way around. <laughs> no, I think I did that right. So there's a little bit of a difference and there's a process that needs to be done to bring the documentation we have written in HackMD and putting it into the format of the ASCII for docs. I did it right, nice Adam. Okay, so we do have some docs experts here, so that's awesome. So we need people to do that kind of translation. And then we also have, and this is probably like the lowest investment, wiki pages um, that need to be marked as retired. So the important part about that is that we keep track of all of the pages we've retired. And this is so that we can make sure that we're not missing anything. As much as Mariana, Sumantra and I have worked on this, it's kind of massive. Um, and there's a lot of, the wiki's uh, structure around ambassadors is grew and grew and grew, right? So we need to make sure that when people look there, it's retired and we're sending them to the com ops page. Um, we just want to, we want to make sure that we reduce confusion on ambassador documentations. That was a big pain point for people. 
So um, there is one extra piece, which is part of number three. It's like 3.A, which is we have a set of assets, design assets that our intern Daria has created. Um, Daria worked at, or is still working as an intern. I'm mentoring her on creating various pieces of resources for community outreach. So this is everything from team logos. So like updated team logos with the new logo, you can put wherever you need it, um, to which badges correspond to the work that gets done um, for community outreach. That's everything from like join SIG to com ops to membership badges, et cetera. And then we have a whole set of documents called how to join Fedora. So those are three different versions and they're in like five languages each. So all of that needs to be put up onto the docs page as well. And those are done. They're right now in a Google Drive doc or Google Drive folder. Um, so whoever is going to work on that piece just needs to, uh, I'll drop a link in your request access or you can give me your email and we'll do it that way. So um, keep scrolling down. You'll see that I've organized it by module, right? So these ones should probably each say module. Um, so the way that the docs works, as far as I understand it from Justin, is that each page is a module. Um, and from there, Am I saying this right? I don't know. Maybe Justin should come, <laughs> come up here. But basically, uh, I think we were trying to do it in an ideal way in our hack and bees um, so that people who are converting it over to the documentation know what it is. So here we go. Roll handbooks. This one I'm going to get into. Right. So I guess for the folks who are doing the documentation part, basically would just need to know, like, does this work for you as is? Do you need um, it to be formatted a different way or et cetera, et cetera? Is this, does this make sense as it is? Um, so you'll see I have made, um, sorry, tables for each one of them for people to go in and say, you know, this is what I've been doing. I think you would just like put your initials or your Fedora account uh, thing here. And this is an overview of like, all the different things we're trying to to get up here and then we did gather a lot of existing links already so we tried our best to make sure that um, we could get as many as possible but uh, there's probably still ones out there as i mentioned earlier so these are all um, related docs and wiki pages etc cetera, etc cetera, that we can pull information from so that was my spiel. Any questions to start? I don't have a question, but I can explain a little bit how we prepare the content we have for the ComOps um, role handbook. So as you saw on that wiki page, there, there is a list of links that we have gathered for each role handbook. Uh, we gathered all these links or what I did it was just by Googling a Fedora Commons member or something like that. And we tried to um, collect everything, any type of information we had about Commons members. And then we reviewed all of these text, uh, texts and um, we came up with a new content or just copied and pasted and updated some of the original documentation. So this is what we did. Practically, it's not that we reinvented come up segmentation or anything like that. Uh, we we focus a little bit also on the tone of voice for the old handbook. We want it to be a little more friendly instead of just uh, superficial documentation. Because if this is meant to be for somebody who just started contributing, we didn't want to have um, terms that they're not aware or something like that. Oh, go ahead, Mariana. I was talking about the HackMD. So beneath the uh, ComOps role, uh, there are the other sections. We have created, you know, subcategories or 
subsections uh, that fitted the comops role but might not be fit for the other ones so if you think that uh, you have to split it uh, based on something else or add or remove something feel free to do so so hi justin Hey. So I actually just noticed that we have some documentation that didn't come from our docs page, Mariana. I see that there's some missing here. So I'm going to actually move that over. But based on the, the different things, um, I'm open for commentary right now and questions on how we're going to go about this, as well as, um, you know, if you have an idea of one of those tasks that I mentioned that seems like a good fit for you, feel free to drop that in the channel, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll start getting people kind of assigned on working on one thing or another. I know Justin has a comment. I guess for me, I was wondering, at least one area that I could help out with is looking at the modules as they're written out on the, on the wiki page. Mm -hmm. I can put, I think while people are working in the hacking and working on content, I can start setting up those modules in the ComOps docs repository. So it's that way, if you have it written, there's a file, we just have to go and update. It's already there, just an empty placeholder. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. I wonder if um, folks are interested in doing documentation. Like maybe it would make sense for Justin to share his screen as he did that. I don't know, Justin, are you comfortable with that? If it helps, I can, I can go through like what the modules uh, look like. But there's also some so, docs in the Fedora. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was actually letting you go ahead. <laughs> oh. So there's some docs in the Fedora docs uh, that I'm trying to look up here that explains what the modules are and how you can create those. Actually, no, we don't. We have just the reasonable. Okay, so I don't have, I have a different page. I'll still link that in the chat. That's helpful for people writing. But I could just share out how to create a module and like what I'm doing, if that's helpful. But it's um, a lot of uh, online. Yeah, Justin, your audio is doing a little thing right now. Yeah, your audio is really garbled. I don't know if it would help to maybe turn off your video, but it was like a no sound and then a blah, 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 moment. Hey everyone. Hey Adam, how you My doing? My video is weird, but I, sound should be fine. Sound is spot on. Okay, cool. Glad to have you here. Um, so Adam, uh, what out of the different things I was describing sound like a good fit? Like, what would you be interested in working on today? I can I can help with like the heavy lifting with setting up the docs side of things. Um, I don't know if people know the templates that we have on Packer, I need to find it. Awesome. Yeah. So we have two people on docs. We'll have Adam and Justin on docs. Um, Jack, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, <laughs> Glad to hear that. Yeah, tell me, tell me what you, what you think I can best take care of. Um, Okay. I think since we got two people on docs right now, how would you feel about retiring wiki pages? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. So basically you want to go to the wiki pages that are here, existing wiki pages. Yep. So I think what we need to have in there is a link to the new docs uh, site so that's the com ops. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we might have actually have like an example of a retired thing on the wiki. I'm just not sure where it is. Oops, so we can actually sound. do a redirect. Oh, okay. Justin, there's a high pitched sound coming from you, I guess. And it's painful. Now it's yes. gone. Oh, thank Sorry. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's, technology is not on your side today. <laughs> I thought my neighbor turned on their television. <laughs> okay, Adam, I like your idea even better. Like the redirect sounds even better, but will people ever like get to that page and they still well, have it marked as the, retired? 
the question is with the redirect, if you redirect, then you basically, no one's going to ever see the page that was there before. Correct? Yeah. So it's a matter of figuring out whether there's any value in leaving that page, even though it's retired as up or whether it's just more practical to have it forward to the com ops page. Right. Or whatever. So I think it's probably more beneficial to have the redirect in my okay. opinion. Although I do understand the desire to have that historical knowledge accessible. So I don't know. What are other folks' thoughts on this? I'm curious to know what you think. So jo oh, Justin, Justin. Said that they that the redirects are super important and they're tuned for SEO. So I guess that's probably the best way to go then. The redirects will make it hard to access the wiki. Like even if you want to then edit it and like maybe take it back or something like it'll make it tricky because it'll be, it'll keep redirecting you to the docs. So like you will never get back to the wiki page again. Right. Hmm. But we, we might have an example for some of the quick docs, but I don't have the wiki links. Yeah, Justin just sent the link. Oh, cool. Thanks. So basically you can view the source is what you're saying, Justin. Okay. Well, that's how he, yeah, that's how they did the redirect. Right. And if you click view, like on the top, right, it'll basically take you right to the docs. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I didn't actually, we didn't incorporate this into our thinking earlier, but I'm absolutely happy to adapt. Um, yeah, so if you want, I can run through those wiki pages and then just redirect, put in the redirect. So only should be done once the docs page is yep. ready. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. So that's going to be kind of a last step moment. All right. Cool. Then uh, I think we're going to pause on that and... Uh, how are you on pushing uh, like content PNGs, SVGs, and stuff like that to the pages? Does that sound like a section you could tackle, Jack? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Fine. I'm gonna share that folder with you right now. Um, here we go. Can I share that to your AMA Linux email? I'm very uh, yeah, either to that see or just Dario is prepared. Actually. Actually, Marie, just send it to Jacket Fedora Project. Okay, you got it. This way it's com compartmentalized. <laughs> All right. So so basically what you're going to work on then, Jack, is moving these onto its own, like, module of docs. So you'll have a, an over... Hey, Sumantro made it. You got power back, huh? Yeah, fine. Nice. You're a little windy right now. Um, all right. No, that's, that's... <laughs> right. So you'll see in that folder, there's subfolders. So you see badge artwork, cheat cubes, uh, you know, how to join, um, how to join Fedora. And each one of those will like have be like assets. And then each one underneath will be each one of those folders. Yeah. And then those files go underneath. So is that something you can work on? Yeah. Oh, Justin. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Justin. Okay, cool. So we have Jack on something. We have Adam and Justin both uh, saying they can do heavy lifting, setting up the docs pages. So uh, who else do we have who would like to pitch in? And I can help find something to work on. If y'all just want to watch for now and pitch in when you're ready. Oh, awesome. There he is here. Okay. So I think what we can have you do, Daria, is to grab this first one here, the team overviews. Um, and this is actually not going to change too much. So what needs to happen um, here is we need to just take the current 
team overviews that exist and bring them into this document. So that's really like just an overall description of the team. Then once that's done, uh, Daria, you would let us know in the chat. And then me, Mariana, or Sumantro will take a look at it. And once you're done with that part, we can move on to the next thing. All right, so Daria, does that sound good? Cool. Um, and I will give you this team overviews link directly. You just have that right in front of you. So, right. Anybody else here in the chat with us ready to work on some docs? All right. So it looks like uh, Adam and Justin are figuring out who's doing what as far as docs pushing or the outline there. So I guess we can just kind of get into it and then I'll try to leave the screen up and, and look at the chat every few minutes to see if anyone's jumping in. Mariana Sumatra are here too to help. What I'm going to start doing is actually is finishing up moving the stuff from our docs that we had written up as the co-leads and make sure that they're on to our hack and and then uh, kind of check back in with the team. How's that sound? All right, is anyone confused about what they're doing or need any more assistance to get going? Nope, but if I have any questions, I'm sure that I'll ask. Okay, okay, great. Okay, we're gonna get to it. I'm just gonna put myself on mute and feel free to jump in with any questions. All right, I have a question. Is there a current process to become a comm ops team member? Like, besides, like, you know, introduce yourself, go to meetings, et cetera, et cetera. Is there, like, so people open a ticket? Or is it just, like, they ask and then someone says yes or no? Anyone know the answer to this before I dig deeper? I believe there is nothing like that. It's, I believe it is introductions, and then you, if you want to go for join, then join might help you to get into comms. So all I know that's the comms. Uh, okay. Just in my opinion. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Okay, drop something. I'm going to take a look at that real quick. And Jack, I'm sharing that with you. And he was just being fussy because it's like, you're outside of the organization. <laughs> just ping me again if you need any more access. Thanks. So this link that you provided, Justin, is like a how to join com ups, right? So we're re and we're rethinking it a little bit to be these role handbooks. So my question for the group here is, do we think we need a how to join as a separate section, how to join each of the teams, or should that be in the role handbook? So com ops team, like role com ops team member, and then like how to join underneath that. Does that make more sense? I see Mariana. So, okay. So what is there currently needs to be, I put it in the team overviews model, not the handbook. So you put the how to join in the team overviews module. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Anybody else have thoughts on this? I guess the role handbook is like after you've joined, but I think you would need to read that to know if you wanted to join. Um, for me, it would make a lot of sense after a short paragraph describing the role, telling you how to join that or how to leave that group. So, so with the team overview, you think it makes sense or the, the role? Is the role or the overview? As a role. So we have a As vote a role. for role, a vote for overview. Okay. Sumatra, I'm curious. And Daria, um, I'll get right with I, you. Uh, what's your opinion I, on this? I, I would go for the role because it is supposed to be a description of what exactly the part you will be playing and then if you're not interested, how can you just uh, tell it to other people so that they don't read this. So, Mantra, can you speak you are a very quiet? Um, so, yeah. 
All right. Uh, so I would basically go for the roll bit because I would basically want to know what's in it for me to do act as in actionables. And then more importantly, if I don't want to do them or I want to leave the group, I should be able to explicitly mention other people that I'm not blocking their way and basically just roll them. Out. So it would be from the role side. Yeah. Okay. So I think I I've just thought of a good compromise. What if we have under the team interview, like a link that says, and here's how to join kind of a thing. And then it just brings you right to the, the role. Would that make sense? Because then, then you have it kind of linked right there. And if people are reading the overview and they're like, oh, I want to join, it's somewhere else keeps it a little bit segmented, but we have it then in both places. Does that sound good? Yeah, OK. Totally Justin, good. what do you think? I, my, my idea was to keep the overview brief. Because sure, it's sure. It will, it will be brief. It's just going to say, and here's how to join. <laughs> Right, that's just like it'll link us over to the other okay. thing. Justin, what do you think about that? We got a plus one from Daria. Okay, the main question was what you had already answered. Uh, we had some back and forth on where the how to join section should land, right? So, we had a couple of votes for under the role handbooks, couple of votes for the overviews. So we're saying to really go into depth on how to join and how to leave, we think it should be with the role handbooks, but we can link to that in the team overview. So team overview and here's how to join. And it is a link to that, that role handbook. Are you on board with that? What do you think? Right. Okay. Right. So, but I think like, hmm. well, it would also tell you like how to retire or leave the group. And it would also tell you like how to come back. So those are also things we were putting in there. So we're, maybe that's why we we're thinking the role handbook. Um, okay. Okay. I'm going to continue on and pressing on any. Okay. So wait, Daria, you're ready to do something new, right? Okay, cool. So you have the team overviews. Awesome. So how are we going to Okay. Um, so someone needs to review that team overview section. We're going to leave that as is. Um, All right, there, the next thing you can work on is this community outreach badges to earn. So some of them are going to have, um, some of them are going to be pushed already. Some of them are not going to be pushed already, but we need, um, don't worry about the art, Jack's worrying about that part. So we're actually going to have just a little bit of text that needs to go with this, right? So what we need is, what the badge is named, like the title, and how to earn it. And that has to be for each one of these. So I'm pretty sure you were the creator of these badges. So you, and, and we reviewed them many times. I think there might also be like a list overall in our meeting notes, our weekly meeting notes area. So how does that sound? Can you pull that one off? Okay, awesome. Question. Has have has anyone ever retired from the com ops team before? Uh, they might not, but since we are making a role handbook, it's important that they give we give them a way out. Absolutely. That's the unit. Oh, absolutely. Of. I just wanted to know if um, this is something that had happened before. We could reference, or if we kind of want to think about like how exactly like someone might go about this. Would it be a conversation with someone on the team that they trust? Would it be something on the discourse, like, "Hey, folks, I'm taking a break," or you know, "I'm leaving the team for the time being"? 
and, and what other experiences people had on other teams, other places, not even Fedora. I know people here working all over the open source community, like how do other people handle that retirement thing, right? If people want to leave or do people just quietly back away and we just let our group membership grow and grow and grow. Thoughts on that. So in this case, we should create a rule on how to step back. Not, not yeah, I'm rule. asking what, how, just the <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so what we oh. used to do in ambassadors way back then is basically um, after a period of inactivity, we mm -hmm. would basically reach out and just ask the person, are you still active or do you want right. us to uh, remove your, you know, retire you from from the group or whatever it is and if we depending on what the response we got back was or whether we didn't receive a response then you know we, yep. we would just remove them unless they came right. back and has to be added back right right so that's exactly what we did for ambassadors i want to say like eight months back at this point so i think we can just take that over and we need to just build it into the com ops kind of like this is part of the responsibilities of the team is to do like kind of an annual check in, like who's been active, who hasn't maybe send out and have that moment. Um, yeah, so what exactly. we did, what we did with um, the ambassadors was for folks who had not been active in the Fedora account system for a year plus, I think we sent them an email directly and we said, Hey, this is what's going on. Do you want to be a part of it? So is that year, like a yearly cleanup or cleanup seemed like the right, <laughs> cadence yeah and then if folks want to do it on their own they can maybe so as far as i can remember when ambassadors wanted to retire they would just send an email on the ambassador's mailing list saying that hey i'm just stepping down and might come back or whatever just life goes on and i remember that i have read some emails from people when I first joined in 2016 uh, the people were stepping down with simply an email. Okay, okay so um, ComOps does not use the mailing list. There's discourse and actually I think that's kind of a nice way for people to leave their remarks like hey we'll miss you or you know thanks for all your work kind of a thing. So I'm going to write that process out to be a discourse thing otherwise it's a uh, yearly group cleanup. So Justin wants to voice out that Alicia mentioned that the, the process for the join SIG actually is uh, some of the points as you go by the join SIG are already listed on a talk called membership. Which is sure. Topic. So um, Sumantra, your audio is not great. I don't know what's going on with that, but um, I think that we had talked, Mariana Sumantro, we had talked about simply linking to the join page because it was already in existence. And um, it's kind they've kind of expressed a desire to be a somewhat separate entity. So I feel like although it's connected to the community outreach teams and should be listed here, we don't actually need to go in depth there because they have done a great job managing that team. And I don't think we need to um, <laughs> try to get, try to make changes where, you know, don't fix or don't try to fix it if it's not broken kind of thing, right? Um, exactly, Justin, that's my point too. How does that sound, Alessio? If we just, we just link to the join docs. See in a few. Gotcha. Okay, so we need to know exactly where that's going to be. So um, I think we can actually kind of, let me see, this is probably going to be in I think we should have them uh, both in the team inner overviews and the modules um, just, to, just to make sure that we're covering all our bases there. So um, let me see these join sig docs real quick. So we could send it to two very, two different places, I think. 
So I think like the team overview page could be this links to that specifically. And then let's see. Then there's like membership. I think that's one. Okay. And then if we could directly link to membership for the team overview. Hmm. Oh man, I want to get these. There's some graphics on here we should redesign. <laughs> um, okay, so what do folks think about those ones? Using those links there. Does that work? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that as a yes. Um, I agree. The joint okay. page is very well structured and the content is very well. I like it. Yeah. So I think we just have to link to that one. Mm -hmm. Hey, Maria, I have a question. Sure. What's up? All right. So I opened the, I, I finally managed to get that file. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So basically, um, it's, was it supposed to have any of the other stuff in there? Or is this only the how to join Fedora stuff? So there are supposed to be more than that. Let's see if I didn't share the right thing with you here. Um, they're supposed to be, let's try this link. I'm going to send it via hop in. Give me one sec. And then how are those usually linked on that, uh, page? Are they, are they hosted anywhere that I can, um, use to include the link on that, on the, like in the HackMD doc or how does that work? Right. So I think part of what we need to do is have them visible, right? So that people can actually see it and say like, oh, wow, that looks cool. And I want to use that. Right. Right? right. So, okay. Try, I just sent you another file link. Try to ask for sharing on that one. Um, yep. So we want to be able to see them. So there's a chance that we might need to generate some P, like smaller PNGs, which is fine because we have Dario here with us, <laughs> or we can do it like a little bit of a later date. But I also think that we should, um, have like the full resolution and the source files uh, available there too as links. So I think we should have like, you know, full resolution, a source file as links, and then just like a small kind of PNG or something. If we can use the one that's generated already, great. If not, we can make new ones. How does that sound? Um, yeah, that sounds fine. So am I, Am I uploading the original um, file there, like the PNG or whatever it is, onto the actual, onto the actual like HackMD doc? Okay, so yeah, we don't need to. We can skip the HackMD part, I think. Uh, actually, let me ask my docs people. <laughs> docs people, what is the easiest way to get a set of graphics up onto a docs page? What we're looking to do is have a thumbnail so that people can see what it is and say, hey, I want to use that. And here it is in French, German, Spanish, Hindi, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, we want to have files to the, we want to have links to the source file and a full resolution like PDF. So basically I'm wondering what is the best way to do that? What's, what should our process be to get those up there? I guess we got to commit them to uh, this assets um, folder in the repository. Okay. Does that sound right, Adam and Justin? Okay, cool. Gotcha. So okay. I guess my... And if I unmute, you will even hear me. Yes, that will be good. We can hear you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so that sounds good. I guess my one question is, I guess we could test to see if you can make it a thumbnail there, but we might need to generate more files. So if that's the case, let me know. How's that? Good? Okay, folks. So I'm in the so many different presentations. There was <laughs> bound to be a little bit of overlap. I have to leave just a couple minutes early here to go 
do a Mindshare Committee presentation. So uh, Sumatra and Mariana will help wrap up. Uh, my only thing is I just hope that we can document what everyone's been working on somewhere. Would that make sense if we just had like a hack MD or do people want to update the wiki a little bit? I just want to make sure we know what progress we made during during that. So Mariana and Sumatra, if you want to organize uh, making that happen so that we can see where we left off, what needs to be done, what we did get done, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you everyone so much for helping out. And this is like a great start to stuff. And I think we're gonna have like a solid base for this, um, for the knowledge base. I used to say base twice, but here we are. Um, and I will talk to you all soon. Peace. Bye. So anyone have any idea why when I try to log into Pagger, it's telling me open ID request was canceled? Uh, so Jack, it happens sometimes that, uh, okay, I'll tell you that it's, it's not going to work out. Uh, however, can you verify going, do you have a CNA plus one by any chance? Yeah, what was that, Sumatra? Um, so you need a permission for CLA plus one. If if you don't have a CLA plus one, then it will eventually just tell you to, I mean, basically not authorize your request. So what I can do quickly for you is, I if you can give me a fast username, I can add you to the docs group. Yeah, um, it's just Jack. So Peter, I have. Uh... I have 2FA on, but I know that my 2FA work. Um, does anybody know where Nick is? He is kind of the admin for the docs. I can add you to QA if you want. I have access for QA. I mean, for the time being. That should suffice in the Because you are not on the docs, they're fast. So, hey, folks. You're on the top of the hour. So, uh, great work by all of you guys. We made significant amount of pro progress reviewing stuff. More importantly, finally pushing things to wherever they needed to be at the destination for the contributors to find out. Um, uh, so, this is a continuous process, like everyone can understand. It's not like we can do everything in like on the Hours. That's not possible. But yeah, that be, that's a great start. So, you know, any, any last minute comments or something that you need to add up? Yeah, just in that would be really good if you can update that. That would be awesome. So, I don't have a comment. I just wanted to thank you all for helping today in anything that you worked. It's really. Um, amazing to see the whole revamp process actually coming to an end because the goal was to end it in a few months and having documentation in place is one of the most important uh, points of the entire revamp. So thanks everybody for joining. See you around at Nest. Bye.